Hi guys, it's Siobhan with Two Kitty and Beyond. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have a pretty jam-packed energy update for today. There's a couple of different topics that I like to touch on. Some of them are a little bit heavier than my usual content. I don't normally like to gravitate towards these types of things, but that's what's coming up in the collective as well as within myself. Um, so I'm being urged to speak on the subject. I'm going to start off with the Schumann Resonance lately. We've been getting a lot of activity in the Schumann Resonance. The past few days have been quite intense. It's been fluctuating. Um, 110, I think, was the most recent high um, that we've had. And then today we're at power 88. So there's been steady highs and large fluctuations as well. So it's been going up and down quite a bit, which is making for almost this roller coaster type effect with the energy. You may need to rest additionally at this time. That's usually the case when the Schumann resonance starts to um, increase in its power and amplitude. We can feel it physically as well as mentally and emotionally. So there's been some uh, physical symptoms like emotional purging that's coming up big time right now in relation to what's going on in the collective. And I'll touch on that in a second. But I've also experienced um, some ear activations, heart and solar plexus upgrades as well, and uh, some extreme exhaustion that comes along with that. So as the system is upgrading, we really do need to rest physically. So for example, yesterday I had a three hour nap after um, this energy really peaked and I felt it. I supported myself with a little bit of Reiki, but I had to sleep for about three hours. And then last night, I think I slept for maybe 10 hours um, on top of that. So lots and lots of rest. The synchronicities number-wise have also been showing up all over the place in the Schumann Resonance as well. So today with 88, that's the power number. So we're getting a lot of power coming through. So one thing that I wanted to talk about was last night, um, I had an interesting dream come through. And if you follow me on Instagram at 2 Kitty and Beyond, you'll see the meme that I made about it today. That was sort of the lighter aspect of like alien contact in the astral realm so i've had this happen a few times before usually it's with my guides or some other um, interdimensional beings that are bringing forth information that's relevant at the time and this is what happened last night as well so i had this being come through and he was um i can't i don't know if it was a he or a she but it was sitting beside my bed um but i wasn't in the bed that i was that I actually sleep in at night. It was um, it was like a whole other place that I'd never been. Um, and it was interesting because it pulled me up out of the dream that I was already in, which is usually the case when I have this kind of astral contact. So this being, initially I was like, oh my God, what is this? Because it, it, it was not like any type of alien, and I don't like that term, but there's not really any other extraterrestrial, I guess, that I've ever seen before in my, my channelings or um, the Reiki sessions that I do. Uh, so this one was, it kind of had like yellowish brown speckled skin um, and it had big eyes, which is usually the case, but it had these long fingers with like suction cups on the end of them. It almost looked like a humanoid type of a gecko or something like that. And um, it was asking me to to pay attention and I was kind of almost trying to avoid it initially because I was scared of the way that it looked. But then as soon as I looked into its eyes, I could feel its energy and it was like, okay, this is a heart-centered being. This is okay. And um, it was asking me to save the children. And then I realized there was children in the room that I was in from all different ages. There was young ones to more adolescents, teen teenagers and things like that. Um, this being was asking me to 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 save the children and then um, it asked me telepathically to kind of promise to do so and then it pressed its forehead against my forehead and when it pulled away I had this flower of life shaped pattern glowing on my forehead afterwards so this was interesting it was almost like um reminiscent of like a Star Trek mind meld or something like that I'm not quite sure what it was but um, it felt very positive. After that, though, the room that I was in started to collapse. The ceiling started to cave in, and I was rushing to try and usher these children or these um, these people out of the structure that I was in. There was another person there with me, uh, another woman, I don't know, another girl uh, who was helping as well. I don't know who that was. but So this was pretty interesting. Um, 
there's been a lot more astral contact and a lot more channeling that's been coming online lately and specifically to do right now in this case with the the safety of the children of the world so if you are aware of the dark agenda um i'm gonna kind of urge you guys to go look at magenta pixies video which i will leave in the description box below this with the link so you guys can check it out um it's called the three-step process to stargate ascension i believe or something like that so she goes into detail on what this is all about and the three steps to basically reclaiming sovereignty and getting off of that um that hijacked timeline essentially so this dream was in relation to the abuse that's been um ritual abuse of the children uh, sexualization of the children. Again, this is not a topic that I like to talk about, but I'm being urged to do so. So I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, and then I woke up this morning and after that dream, and I was kind of just mulling it over. And as I normally do, I get up, I answer emails, I grab some breakfast and some tea, and I sit down and I go and look at uh, YouTube and see what's new. So I went on and I found Amanda Ellis's new video that she, I think she posted it yesterday. Um, it came up in my feed and I felt called to click on it. So right away, I knew that there was some additional information in this video. So I'm going to provide the link uh, in the description box as well to her video. And this went into an SOS call that was going out from the old earth uh, as the, si the, the ship is sinking, the old earth collapsed. That's like the room that I was in. It was collapsing. It was caving in. I had to get the kids out. So um, she also channels Leonard Nimoy in that video, which, as we know, he played Spock. So he was all about, you know, Vulcans were all about mind melding. So this, there was a lot of synchronicities that came through from this video and really just confirmed the dream that I had and the meaning behind it. Um, so this is important. I, I highly recommend going and checking it out. There's lots of lots of messages that are coming through. So I also pulled some tarot cards on the subject and I will insert them here so you guys can see them. So the Seven of Pentacles, the World, the Hierophant in Reverse, Queen of Cups, Sun in Reverse, Ace of Cups, the Moon and the Tower card. So I see this as uh, basically speaking on what I was just talking about. It's the old world collapse um, with the Tower card and the World card. Um, the Hierophant in Reverse is again those old structures that are crumbling, especially the corrupt ones. I mean, we have all become aware of the corruption within the religious sects. I won't say anything specific, but you guys know what I'm talking about um, with the children in, in the church. So it goes deeper than that, um, but this is definitely part of it. And the this is kind of coming to light now with the sun and the moon. Um, it's been within the collective unconscious and the sun card being reversed. I do see this as us tuning into it on a more subconscious level, like what I was experiencing, uh, within the dream state in the astral realm. I do see the ace of cups indicating our need to heal, to find that inner peace and that grace to be able to support the world through this transition. Same thing with the queen of cups. It's like this psychic connection that we're getting, um, through the heart chakra, through the third eye chakra to be able to heal the world the seven of pentacles i see as patience patience in the process knowing that the work that we've put in is beneficial and that it's going to come to fruition so um what we're doing energetically as well as those who are out there you know um on the ground level really taking this taking these structures down it's working uh, this harvest period as the raw collective would like to call it is it's uh, in the offing, essentially. So we're getting to that point. So this is this is the collapse of the dark agenda. This is the 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 end of that kind of of ritualistic manipulation and energy harvesting. So we really need to to do what we can consciously to assist with these children either transitioning safely or being physically saved um, and then assist them with their energetic healing. I actually had a client the other day, a Reiki client, who was connected to these children. They came forward in um, his solar plexus chakra. There was fragments of these children seen in like almost a, a mirror, like little shards of glass all within his solar plexus chakra and they it had spread out all over his body as almost like a protective mechanism um, because he did experience uh, sexual abuse in, in childhood. 
And because of that, he had these cords of attachment going out to millions of other sufferees, as his higher self deemed them, which are these children who are being abused um, on a continual basis. So there was this this energy of of that connection through the collective unconscious and through the individual unconscious as well. So when we bring this this into the conscious mind through intention, we can send healing to those those individuals, those souls that are in need of it and support the transition as this old paradigm crumbles and falls. It needs to be uh, cleansed. We need to pull as many of, of those tortured souls out of that dark uh, state so that we can bring them up into this higher timeline, which is inevitable, as uh, Magenta Pixie was saying. So that's great. Now, I also wanted to mention some of the other number synchronicities that have been very prevalent lately. I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing 1111 and 111 absolutely everywhere. So this was actually the first number that woke me up, and that's quite common. The 1111 is often the, the first numerological sequence that triggers an awakening it can trigger a general awakening it can trigger um an awakening to the dark truth it can trigger a, a spiritual awakening or a, a star seed awakening or any and all of them or a combination of them so there's definite energy within this 1111 code that's coming through right now there's many energetic and consciousness level activations that it is triggering so anytime you're seeing 1111 it's not just an angel number indicating that um, you're on the right path or to keep a positive mind it's also an activation um, at a dna level so it's activating different levels of consciousness that are necessary for this new level of our ascension it is also a confirmation of the ascension itself so that being said, there's an Earth Day meditation, a global meditation that I'd like to share with you guys to tune in remotely. It's on Earth Day, which is um, April 22nd. I believe there's an actual time, but I was called to share 11, 11 a.m. or p.m. So whatever you guys feel called to, um, just sending out the intention to heal the children, to detach from that old timeline, to align with our with our collective highest timeline of ascension and to create peace on earth aligning with that new earth paradise uh, code so we can do those kinds of meditations every day but if we do them all collectively uh, it's even more powerful so earth day is another one um as we're just going to keep doing this. Let's just keep getting as many people as we can to meditate together to create this this change at a consciousness level and then to see that physically. It's also on the same day as the new moon in Taurus, which is on the 22nd as well. It depends on your location on Earth, but um, the new moon is a great time for new intentions. It's the new moon. It's the first of the cycle again. So it's the zero point energy bringing us in the, to the one energy, which is that new beginning. So set the intentions for the healing, especially in the Taurian energy, which is very much uh, a grounded, nurturing energy that is all about um, safety, comfort, ritual, um, but in a healthy way, in a happy way, you know, routine, healthy routines. And it's opposing the sun in Scorpio, I believe. So that gives us access to that really deep, dark, emotional content that needs to come up to create that stability as we move forward. So let's use all of these um, times and, and activations and all the support that we have in the higher realms to our advantage as we unite together separately <laughs> as star seeds awakened beings light workers of all kinds shapes and sizes we're in this together we are truly one we are one being experiencing ourselves as all of these different facets of ourselves so let's unite together for together we are strong and together we rise thank you so much for watching guys i love you so much and we'll see you next time bye